Hi, this is Thomas working with some Jedi displays here. I wanted to show a few tips uh, people had common questions about. Uh, most common question I get is how to surface mount these little components. Well, let's start out with uh, the types of tools that I use for my setup. Basically, a little pair of tweezers here are pretty valuable at uh, manipulating small parts, uh, putting them right where you need them. Uh, I also have, also have like a little flat screwdriver I use to pry things loose, especially the chips and uh, other components. You have a pair of uh, clippers here for cutting off uh, leads that stick out. Uh, a little bit of solder wick sometimes helps quite a bit. Magnifying glass. I have one of these little things, uh, it's called Helping Hands from Radio Shack. You can put your soldering iron in it. And it's got a little couple of alligator clips to hold your stuff, but it also comes with this nice little magnifying glass, which I detach so that I can use to make sure that my solder joints are uh, are good. And uh, the solder irons that I use I have a regular solder iron with a large tip here. It's about a 40 watt. Anything less than 40, you're not going to be able to heat it up enough to get the solder to flow really well in some areas. Um, you can use a smaller soldering iron. I think Radio Shack sells a 15 watt, but there are a lot of things you're going to have real difficulty with uh, only having that much heat. Uh, one of the other soldering irons that I use a lot is this little desoldering iron that they have with a little ball on it. The tip has actually got a little hole in it, and uh, when you put that over the top of a lead sticking out the other side of the bowl, uh, the uh, board, uh, it makes really good contact. Uh, for sucking all the solder out if you need to remove some components and sometimes I'll even use this to help solder components in. Especially in some of the areas where you have a lot of grounding. Uh, grounding tends to want to suck all the heat away and solder doesn't want to flow very well. So sometimes I'll use my little hands uh, to hold the board in place and I'll put the desoldering on one soldering iron on one side and the other soldering iron on the other side to get solder to flow well. Uh, especially for taking parts out that just don't seem to want to come out. Your LEDs, putting your LEDs in there, once you solder them in place, make sure you've got them where they're supposed to be. Uh, I got a couple of tips on that I'll show here a little bit in a little bit here. Because um, once you solder them in place, they're there. You're going to have to cut them out, and then it's going to be difficult to get the little piece that's stuck between in there uh, soldered out so that you can put a replacement in. And uh, the kits come with. Uh, uh, a few extra LEDs for all the different colors, like four or five different uh, extra ones, I believe. And uh, just some regular small solder. But basically, let's show, I'm going to show you how uh, to uh, put some of these smaller components on, especially these little capacitors. Uh, the yellow ones you've got on the front logics and the rear logics, you have uh, these yellow capacitors, which I think are, what are they? I think they're 220 microfarad. Basically, uh, they have the board has two pads, and it's best to just put a little bit of solder on just one of the pads. So I've got my soldering iron heated up here, and I move my stuff out of the way. You put solder on just one of the two pads, and I'll usually go through and do all of them. Especially on the rear logic. There's a whole bunch of little pads. And then what you can do with, it, with your tweezers, you can pick your little components up and kind of hold them in place. Solder it in place, basically. And see there, if you can see a close-up of that. Basically, uh, I've got that one little capacitor on there, but it's only soldered on one side. And now that it's only soldered on one side, I can use my tweezers to uh, hold it in place while I heat the solder up again and get it positioned exactly where I need it to be. Once it's actually uh, right where I want it, then I can solder the other side. It's almost impossible, if you put a drop of solder on both pads, it's almost impossible to get that thing flat and where you want it because one of the soldered blobs is hard and your little component won't go flat on the board. So this method seems to work better. And let's see, let's do a bigger component here. To this one here, I believe. Let me double check my. Yep. Goes in towards the uh, 
capacitor. This is a B. Yep, same one. Okay, so we got it right oriented properly. I'm not even looking at the paperwork. So basically, you heat it up, set your component on there where you want it, let your solder cool, and there you go. All you need to do is put solder on the other side and you're good to go. So basically, that part right there is in place and it's nice and flat. And my other little capacitor here now has solder on both sides. So you can see those. Now as far as uh, putting the LEDs in, that's a real pain in the butt. Uh, the real trick, I'm going to show on here, the LEDs need to be exactly the same space away from the PC board. And I found a trick that seems to work pretty well. Because um, normally, when you shake it like this, the LEDs will fall up and down, and they won't stay exactly where you need them to be. Um, I found these little zip ties, these little clear pla well kind of like white plastic zip ties are the smaller ones that Radio Shack sells and it, they just seem to be thick enough to be able to slide right down the middle of the LEDs uh, between the board and the display face and with, this, with these screws that I picked up at a hardware store bolted them in place you'll notice uh, they don't move so now if I go through and clip all these leads off and then solder those in place um, they're all exactly the same space away Problem I had before, be, not having enough uh, anything to space it. Uh, when you solder one of the uh, LEDs, and then when you pull your soldering iron away, it tends to want to pull the thing with it, and all it does is it sucks the LED up inside the display, and then it's not flush anymore. So you end up with all these LEDs that are like uneven, and that looks a mess. And then you got to go through and desolder it, push it back down where it belongs. And if you went through and clipped it off and clipped it too short, well, you're SOL. So this seems to work pretty well. Basically, I go out and buy a package of these, and then stick one of these uh, under each row. And on the front logics, obviously, you only need five. The rear logics, I'll use uh, however many rows there are, uh, going the other direction. And in the center, I've got to pull the uh, the, two, the screws out of the center to get them in there and then put the screws back in afterwards. I tend to get a little bit of crowning but not enough to worry about and uh, that saves a lot of problems right there. Um, when you get everything done actually going through I got a pair of clippers here and now that I've got this one here uh, done basically to clip these off, I'll go through on the first row and clip it just, oh, not even a sixteenth of an inch off the uh, board. It's enough where there's just a little bit sticking out. Basically like that. And then the next batch I need to tip my uh, clippers up. Because now you want to cut them flush with the first row. So tipping it up will allow you to get the next row and the rows after that the same height. So that they'll all be the same height across the back, like this one here. So when you go to, when you go to solder it, it's all nice and even. Uh, that's a trick, and it takes you a little bit of practice. Um, takes a little while to do that. I'll usually do up a few of them and then go through and do a lot of clipping at the same time. The other thing you want to do is uh, you want to check your resistance once you get it done before you wire it up. Um, you want to check to make sure your chips are pointed in the right direction. The little uh, notch in the top on the left side is pin 1 and on the boards he has, Scott has a little like a, an O shape. That's pin 1. You want to make sure you've got your sockets pointed in that direction with the little notch and when you go to put your chips in you want to make sure they're also pointed in that direction uh, if they're not they will burn out or cause damage I've had a half, couple of those happen because I wasn't paying attention and I've had several people out there also do the same thing so I'm not, it's not just me either um, it's a common mistake 
but if you double check your work before you apply power you'll probably catch it and save yourself a lot of headache um, you want to check the resistance after you get the LED soldered in you can go through with a magnifying glass and check uh, check make sure all the LED le uh, the pins basically are all nice and clean and there's no extra solder connecting the negative to the positive which would cause the driver chips to burn out so you want to kind of go through carefully and look at those and uh, one way you can check to make sure if you have a, uh, a meter uh, pins one, two, and three. Check uh, check those and see if uh, if there's any shorts between those. If the resistance is somewhere 10,000 K or higher, um, that's good. That's where it's supposed to be. Um, or maybe it's a thousand or higher. Anyway, anything more than uh, than zero is good. If it's shorted out, then you know somewhere in there you've got a short. You need to go through and check and uh, see if you've got a blob of solder between two connections and remove that and that's another place where Mr. Solder desoldering iron here comes in pretty handy cleaning stuff up like that usually when I go through and solder my stuff it's usually a pretty much a mess the first time through and then I'll go through and clean it out and uh, it looks really good um, you want to make sure you're giving it 5 volts and make sure you've got it hooked up properly negative positive it's clearly marked on the board um, most of the kits that I've sent out come with a DC to DC converter which here's one here that's not finished but uh, I, I usually use a uh, I've got a power supply out of an old computer you can uh, take the black one of the black wires which is ground and wire it to the green one of the green wires which will turn the power supply on so that you can just plug it in turn it on or power it up and you're, you're getting 5 volts and 12 volts out of, the, out of the leads that come out of it normally you'd have to have it plugged into a computer for it to do that but if you just short the green to the black wire uh, it, it's like the on off switch and I use that I put the 12 volts into the DC to DC converters which converts it to 5 and it goes to the display and works just fine so I've just got a, on my test bench here. I've just got an old power supply. Basically, uh, that's about it. Those are some of the tips. Uh, I've got a few more. Uh, I'll probably do another video on, but uh, that should get everybody going. Uh, as far as the rear logics, hopefully we'll get the uh, the LEDs for that and send those out next, so people can assemble those. And I'll show a little bit more about uh, some of the uh, tips for that. Thanks a lot.